Hello, time for another um, Home Breeze at 80 video. Uh, I have a, a software video for you today. Um, I'm going to be demonstrating some uh, new functionality in the LM5 Tolls firmware that I've uh, made quite a bit of progress on recently. Um, so I, you know, I've got uh, got the LM5 Tolls hooked up, uh, not to the uh, vintage DEC terminal this time, but back on a, um, a screen session on my Linux laptop so I can get a a nice big clear uh, font going on because I know it was a bit hard to read the last video. So um, you know, I'll jump straight into it. I'm going to um, load the uh, new version of the software from my PC over the serial channel. Um, so you can see it gets transferred over in 256 byte blocks and then uh, a slightly smaller block at the end. The firmware um, is up to I think about four and a half k now. Um, I've got an 8K EEPROM in, in the LM512, so we're you know, just a little bit past halfway, and um, I, I am certain I could definitely optimize for um, for space a bit more than I have already. So um, actually, I guess before I uh, go any further, I should say that I've um, sort of uh, internally restructured the, the firmware a little bit. Um, so I've done demonstrations in the past where you've seen various uh, bits of functionality like memory dumps and um, you know commands to read and write from the CF card, that kind of thing. I've sort of split that in two now, so uh, when you switch the machine on, you boot into um, what I've called a, a, a DOS, which is kind of a um, relatively simple, high-level thing, and only has uh, four commands, and in fact, only three of them are really useful. So there's the date command, I demonstrated before. Um, not the correct date at all, but uh, I, I think maybe I've got the wrong value uh, wrong value caps for the crystal and the clock off there or something, because the, the RTC on this is, is quite bad, but um, there's the date command, there's a serial load command we've just seen, um, and there's CF boot command, which probably doesn't work, and I should probably take out, um, and that's that's about it, um, and then there's this monitor command, and so a lot of the other functionality that you would have seen, I've split into a, a separate monitor, which is, um, compared to the DOS, a very low level, sort of, you know, not day-to-day -day end user kind of thing, and when you enter it, you get a dump of the values of all the registers, um, they are preserved and then reset when you exit the monitor, so you can actually, um, this is fantastic for debugging, uh, I've got, got this set up so that you can use the reset 30 instruction, which is a, a one byte uh, opcode to jump into the monitor, which means that, um, you know, you can, um, I haven't actually done this yet, but you can in principle write a, a debugger which lets you overwrite any instruction in a program with a um, a jump to, to this monitor, it's sort of really handy for debugging, you can see, um, the values on the stack. Uh, what else can you do? A bunch of things. Okay, all the stuff I've seen before with the CF card, um, memory dumping, memory editing, and that kind of stuff. I think just the registers and stack of the new stuff. Um, anyway, uh, I've got in the monitor now so that I can jump to the address 4000 where I just loaded the um, the new code, new firmware over the serial port. So I'll do that. Bang. Um, it looks like I've rebooted. Uh, in fact, I'm now running the, the newer version of firmware. And um, I don't think I've updated the help screen, I have not, so you can't see just yet what's new. But um, what's new is that I've added um, FAT16 file system support. So I've made fairly extensive use of the CF card before in previous videos. Um, and this has always been uh, really direct use of the CF card. Um, so I'll, I'll pop the CF card into my uh, PC's CF card reader and I'll use the, the Unix command um, DD. Uh, to write directly to the block device, so I'm not writing to a, um, you know, not writing to a to a particular partition like slash dev slash sdbp1. Say, um, there is no partition on there. There's no you know partition header. There's no file system. I'll just write straight to slash dev slash sdb. Um, super direct, super low level, and then the Z80 will just sort of you know read that back by reading from the first sector. Uh, consecutively, so it's been extremely low level. Um, you know, you can't. Uh, there's no concept of file, so it's, it's difficult for me to put more than one thing on there at once. It's it's really low level. But um, I've changed that now. So the CF card that's in there is now been reformatted um, with a proper. Uh, you know, it's got a partition table on there. I split the disk into four partitions. Um, they have a proper FAT16 file system on there. I can put it into my computer. I can, you know, browse the, the CF card with a file manager and everything works like normal. I can copy multiple programs on there with different file names. And if I do an ls command on the LM512, I can actually see what's on there. So I've got um, 
what, eight or so uh, files and a directory on there. Um, there's no directory support in the firmware yet. Um, it, it only uh, supports reading and listing files in the root directory. Um, I'll probably expand that in the near future, but for now you can see I've got a couple of files on there. Um, of course, uh, this is this is straight up FAT16. Your file names have to be eight characters or less. Um, you get a three character extension. The file names are all uppercase. It's very uh, rudimentary compared to what we're used to today. Um, and so they're in there and I can actually read these individually. Um, it's not a terribly useful interface, but right now I have um, two things I can do. There's a, a load command. So I'll use this on the um, on big file dot bin. Um, so that command has just loaded the whole contents of that file into LM512 memory, uh, starting at address 8000, which is the, the midpoint of the Z80's address space, um, and with a particular uh, memory address decoding scheme and, and bank page scheme I have in the LM512, this is the beginning of, of banked memory. Um, so this is where I would be loading uh, programs if in a hypothetical future situation where I have a multitasking um, OS running on this. And so I can now um, jump back to my monitor uh, to do something low level and do a memory dump at 8000. And so this is what I've loaded off the disk. You can see it's just uh, a long a long list of um, consecutive, or well, 16 copies uh, each of consecutively uh, increasing bytes. So I've got from zero to, to F here and it just keeps going. Um, I deliberately made this, as the file name suggests, into a big file in the sense that it spans multiple sectors. Um, and indeed, for those of you who know a, bit about facts, a bit, little bit about FAT16, it spans multiple clusters. And so to read this whole file into memory, um, I really did have to do a relatively full um, FAT implementation. You know, you have to look at the FAT table, find the, the cluster chain, and kind of read it um, incrementally. And so this goes on all the way up to um, to FF, but I won't bother. So that that um just straight up loads uh, an arbitrary file into memory. Um, the other thing you can do. Oh, sorry. So I'm I'm in the the monitor now to do a dump. I can't ls because that is a built-in command of the the DOS part of the firmware. So I need to hit continue, which exits the monitor, sets the stack back up like it was. Uh, sorry, sets the registers back up. Let's just keep on rolling. So now you can see my prompt has changed. I'm back in the DOS. I can ls. Um, there's one of the files here. Um, Hellworld.exe um, is is uh, a file of Z80 machine code. Um, so this is an executable. Autofocus has been confused by my use of a pencil. That's oh, okay. We're good. Um, this is that. That's that's a program. Um, and so if I type in that one's name exactly uh, without the load command in front, it will load this into memory at address 8000, uh, it will jump to it and begin executing. Um, when it reaches uh, a return statement, um, a return statement which has not had a corresponding previous call statement, uh, it'll when that program exits, it'll come straight back to DOS. So that's a very simple short program that just prints hello world, drops right back, and I can do that as long as I like. Um, if I spell it correctly, with only eight characters in there, bang. Um, and so I you know, I could have 20 executables on here and I can just run them you know, over and over again in any order I like, which doesn't sound like much, but um, compared to what I've had until now, where each time I want to run a different program, I've basically got to either pull out the CF card, you know, um, do a new DD with just that file directly to the disk system, to the, directly to the disk, um, or else I've got to load it over the serial channel. Um, this is going to be great now, because now as I build up, uh, you know, useful programs, I can just keep them all on the disk, and they're all always there. Um, so, you know, this is, um, this is great. And, um, there's, there's no write support in this yet, it's purely read-only. Um, I do mean to add write support, what I really like is to, um, have a version of that serial load command where I can copy a file off my PC over the serial port and save it to a named file on the, uh, on the LM512. And then basically, um, you know, I never have to actually pull the CF card out again. I can just transfer files to it from the from the PC, um, uh, you know, and, and they'll be there persistent forever after. Um, it, it's going to be pretty cool. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, with, with this kind of interface now, you know, with, with sort of, dare I say, it's starting to approach the, the usability of, you know, of an old DOS machine. Um, 
you know, where you have a file system and you can load and execute programs off there um, one at a time. So, you know, I'm fairly happy with how things are, um, are coming along. Uh, yeah, okay, so that's my rudimentary um, FAT16 support that I wanted to show you. Um, so I just wanted to give a, a real quick uh, shout out to one of my um, subscribers, um, Christopher uh, Botbjerg, who left a comment um, on an earlier video about this uh, failed Quad UART card. Um, Christopher has had a uh, similar problem to the problem I'm having, not with this UART chip, but with a similar one, uh, a sort of closely related product from NXP. Um, he gave me some advice on how to possibly fix this. Um, Christopher, I have not had time to, to do that yet because I've been sort of trying to get this fat stuff working uh, nice enough so I can do another video. But next thing on my list is to kind of revisit this, revisit the um, the ground wiring in particular, see if I can't make any progress. Um, if I do, I will post another video updating you all on that. So um, thanks very much, Chris. And given how all that turned out, um, sometime in the near future I will make a video of another piece of... Uh, Failed hardware. Um, this is this is it. It's not even finished yet. But this is uh, another sound card I've been working on uh, with a, an old Yamaha um, YM2151 uh, FM synthesis chip in there. So very different sound to the um, AY38912 I showed you earlier. Uh, this isn't working for me either. After sticking in a lot of hours, so I will do another hardware failure video, and perhaps someone will be able to help me out uh, with a hint on that as well. Um, but yeah, that's all, that's all for now, um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all again hopefully sometime soon.